Hello everyone, I would like to welcome you all to this lecture of uh, today. First uh, we will uh, look at what we did last time in a very brief manner. Towards the end I introduced uh, the flaming uh, Tamau oxidation and uh, discussed uh, the uh, oxidation of uh, carbon silicon bond to the corresponding carbon OH bond where we discussed the mechanism of the Fleming uh, condition based oxidation. So what we had uh, discussed last time was uh, uh, that if one has a substrate of uh, this type where we have a phenyl ring attached And there are two groups which are attached here and of course you have the um, substrate on which we have uh, say um, here we put it R1. And this is the uh, if we put it as R2 here and uh, this as R3 then we have the asymmetric center here. And what we discussed was that in the presence of potassium bromide per acetic acid like this um, and acetic acid as a solvent one can convert the substrate to the corresponding alcohol with the retention of the stereochemistry here. What we did was, was proto desililation and we proceeded via the corresponding uh, halide which is present on the uh, silicon where you have the phenyl ring was replaced by X which is like a bromine. And then of course we went further. So th there was uh, this conversion of this uh, silicon substrate to the corresponding uh, silicon halide substrate and then we did the oxidation with the per acid here. Say you had CH3, CO3H which underwent somewhat like bare vinegar oxidation type of substrate and finally uh, basic workup followed by uh, protonation led to the corresponding alcohol like this here. So uh, uh, we will see now how uh, this uh, uh, two step process can also be um, done in a slightly different way and how modifications have been done to get one uh, step or one pot. Uh, operation. So this two pot operation which uh, I showed uh, where a substrate of this kind was uh, reacted with uh, potassium bromide and uh, paracetic acid. But one can also use uh, somewhat different uh, reagent systems such as uh, uh, HBF4. Uh, chloroboric acid or BF3 etherate and acetic acid uh, combination and these uh, uh, act as source of uh, a proton as well as uh, F- minus as a uh, nucleophile. So instead of getting uh, uh, what we saw last time instead of getting uh, here instead of getting silicon and bromide what we saw the last time 
instead of bromide now what you will get is a fluoride because it HBF4 as well as BF3 acetic acid is a source of uh, F minus. So instead of getting this bromide one gets fluoride and then one can use in presence of uh, any para acid such as metachloropurbenzoic acid or um, one can use triethylamine as a base or potassium fluoride as a base. So one can then convert that silicon fluoride based intermediate to the corresponding alcohol similar to the mechanism that we discussed using bayer weliger type of oxidation. Now they also uh, uh, invented um, a one pot operation here. In the one pot operation what they have done is that they start with the similar substrate of the silicon type and now they use say for example um, mercuric uh, acetate as a reagent in presence of uh, paracetic acid and acetic acid. So or one can also use bromine molecular bromine or potassium bromide and paracetic acid also. But it is a one step operation that means the intermediate which is uh, form uh, like, like this which is going to be say uh, somewhat like this. The electrophile attaches to this particular carbon atom of the uh, aromatic ring and the positive charge is formed here. Now it is very clear that uh, this bond has to break and you regain the aromaticity. In the process this silicon is attached by the, um, the uh, para acid that we, one uses say for example here you have CH3CO3H. So your para acid attacks onto this silicon in the same pot leading to the, the corresponding uh, intermediate which uh, is expected to undergo uh, the rearrangement of which I turn which I term as uh, bare weliger type of oxidation. So this is the substrate that one can directly get uh, under these conditions where any electrophile such as mercury plus or Br plus in the acetic acid and paracetic acid medium can directly give this one. So this is a, an advantage of using a one pot operation rather than isolating. But then there are both the options which are present uh, and can be utilized or both the protocols can be utilized. So uh, as I said the electrophile reacts with the benzene and now your uh, nucleophile uh, can directly attack on this one and it, this particular uh, 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 X is not, not a halide, not bromide or uh, any other uh, halide, not bromide ion or brom bromine but it is uh, as I explained earlier that directly the electrophile allows the uh, acid the paracid to react to form this substrate and which undergoes oxidation eventually to form the corresponding alcohol. Now what is the evidence for retention of stereochemistry in Tamao Fleming oxidation? Uh, the evidence was uh, provided by uh, a set of experiments that Tamao reported. What he did was he started with a silicon containing moiety uh, like this which is a, a bicyclic bridged molecule uh, in which he had the uh, carbon silicon bond in an exo oriented fashion. Of course there will be substituents as uh, somehow used on silicon like this. Then he carried out the oxidation under his thermal oxidation condition. Then what he obtained was uh, the exo alcohol which was 100% exo. 
In a similar fashion, when he started with another molecule in which the silicon now was endo-oriented, this particular compound had 95% uh, silicon in endo-orientation. This particular molecule led to the formation of the endo product again in 95%, indicating that there is a 100% retention of the stereochemistry. This set of experiments clearly indicate that there is a, a retention of stereochemistry in Tamao Fleming oxidation. Now in Tamao oxidation, the uh, more reactive uh, fluoro or chlorosilanes are used in which silicon is a stronger Lewis acid and shows more metallic character than the substrates used in the Fleming oxidation. So you have a substrate like this which is uh, SIR2X where X is uh, chlorine, fluorine, hydrogen, OR, NR2. These are the substrates, these are the groups which are used on silicon in while carrying out the uh, Tamao type of oxidation which I have not yet discussed in detail but now we will do that. Now further activation by a fluoride ion then leads to a pentavalent intermediate which is able to bind hydrogen peroxide. Now it is something like this, if one takes a silicon substrate which is having here shown as 3 chlorines but one can also start with only one halogen. Then the fluoride ion is attached, uh, is reacted with which forms a pentavalent intermediate. This is a pentavalent intermediate and then hydrogen peroxide also react with it to form the hexavalent silicate ion. So it is a, an example of hyper, hypervalency. So one can start with a, a tetravalent silicon going to pentavalent and then to hexavalent silicate ions and then there is a transfer of the R group which is what is supposedly a chiral group if one starts with a chiral substrate to the corresponding oxygen which is uh, attached to the silicon and then there is a loss of OH- and we get an intermediate of this type where oxygen is now attached to the silicon and the R group has been transferred onto the oxygen which is attached to the silicon. Then of course one has the hydrolysis to form the corresponding OH here. So this is the Tamao oxidation in which we have a slightly different requirements as far as the starting material is concerned and of course one uses the uh, fluoride ion. So uh, uh, if we start uh, with uh, a substrate of this kind here for example where the carbon silicon uh, bond has a well defined stereochemistry that is alpha orientation here with a, of course uh, fluoride attached to the silicon and under Tamau conditions which utilizes 30% uh, hydrogen peroxide, potassium fluoride under basic conditions and using methanol or water uh, as a solvent along with THF. Then one directly gets the hydroxy compound with a retention of stereochemistry like this. It has been uh, shown that in case when methanol is used as a solvent along with THF then an intermediate of this kind where OR is nothing but O methyl is obtained as an intermediate or when water THF is used as a solvent system then here OH group has been uh, observed to be present and this particular uh, intermediate then under the same condition leads to the formation of this hydroxy compound indicating that in these Tamo type of oxidations these type of intermediates are first formed. In the case of Fleming type of conditions which is very different from Tamo condition 
we of course have to have a phenyl group here and we have now a well-defined stereochemistry at this junction where carbon silicon bond is uh, formed and of course we have another well-defined stereochemistry at the adjacent carbon atom and under acidic conditions when the reaction is carried out there is a retention of stereochemistry of the hydroxy group in the final product in a similar fashion irrespective of the stereochemistry of this particular carbon uh, carbon bond here if this is alpha oriented then of course irrespective of the stereochemistry of this and this whatever is the stereochemistry of the carbon silicon bond that is what is translated into the final product that means there is again retention of stereochemistry so looking at these two examples it is very clear that the stereochemistry on the next carbon atom here doesn't have any influence on this stereochemistry of the final product that is in the case of uh, the Mao Fleming oxidation there is a retention of stereochemistry in the final product. Now there is a very interesting reaction that we would like to look at it where this particular organosilane compound has been converted into a very useful uh, dihydroxy molecule of this kind which is a useful synthon in organic synthesis. Now this organosilane molecule has been prepared by reacting this hydroxy compound with the chlorosilane of this type under basic condition and then allowed to uh, undergo a thermolysis at 190 degrees whereby this undergoes cleavage as I have shown here to release this alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde and since there is already an olefin uh, present in the molecule, uh, this undergoes uh, a heterodial solder reaction because we can consider this particular part as uh, a, a heterodyne. And since the deal solder reaction is a concerted process, so this particular heterodial solder reaction leads to the formation of this particular bicyclic molecule with well defined stereochemistry uh, at the newly generated asymmetric center. Now, uh, if we allow this uh, bicyclic molecule in which there is a carbon silicon bond with a well defined stereochemistry uh, uh, to undergo Tamau based oxidation under these conditions, then carbon silicon bond, which is beta oriented, leads to the formation of a carbon hydroxy bond, which is also beta oriented, that means with the retention of the stereochemistry. And this oxygen silicon bond under these conditions undergoes cleavage leading to the formation of the corresponding diol. That means we have converted this very interesting starchy material uh, into uh, a very highly useful dihydroxy compound which is a useful synthon in organic synthesis by utilizing two reactions namely heterodial solder reaction and thermal oxidation. Now, if we take a substrate of this particular type and if it is chiral molecule that means optically pure molecule then under Tamau oxidation conditions we can convert this into the corresponding alcohol uh, which is optically pure because the starting material is optically pure and this particular starting material can be prepared from this olefin which is an aromatic uh, alkene by enantioselective hydrosililation, uh, a process that has been described in this particular paper. Now we have substrates of this type, alkenyl silanes, which can under uh, neutral or basic conditions uh, which employ something like this. You have in neutral conditions hydrogen peroxide, then this KHF2 then you have DMF at room temperature to 60 degrees, then you have a basic conditions under which you use potassium bicarbonate and uh, methanol at 60 degrees. Under these conditions when a substrate of this type which has um, uh, one hydrogen present here leads to the corresponding 
aldehyde. That means under these conditions what is formed is uh, something of this type. So this alk total alkenyl group is transferred to the oxygen and then of course you get an OH and which is nothing but an aldehyde because this will come here and this will come here and it will form the corresponding aldehyde. But under the acidic conditions if one takes uh, hydrogen peroxide uh, acetic anhydride KHF2 which is now an acidic condition in these acidic conditions one uh, then gets the corresponding acid. So what is observed is that if the substituents uh, are like this on the silicon then what is found is if just two equivalents of oxidant are used, two equivalents of oxidant are used on compounds with uh, uh, this type of substitutions on silicon under acidic conditions then only carboxylic acids are observed to be formed. It indicates that alkenyl carbon silicon bond migrates preferentially. So this is the migration. This is the alkenyl silicon bond that migrates to the oxygen of the uh, oxidizing agent like hydrogen peroxide. Then that forms an intermediate of this kind. Here the methyl silicon bond is not uh, transferred or does not migrate. When the acid is used here the hydrolysis will give the aldehyde by the same way as the earlier and that forms the corresponding aldehyde which again reacts with the oxidant to form like paracet uh, paracetic acid or, or, or hydrogen peroxide is added in this one gets the, the oxidation to the corresponding acid. So uh, basically it indicates that under acidic conditions you have a slightly different where you have the acetic anhydride that is used that leads to the per acid here and this is what the per acid is and that undergoes oxidation of this type to form the acid. So this alkenyl silanes are utilized uh, to get to the corresponding aldehydes or to the acids but of course if one starts with uh, uh, a substrate in which uh, the uh, there are two uh, substitutions here this was mono substituted and if it is a di substituted then obviously you will get uh, the, uh, uh, the alcohol coming like this where carbon silicon bond is replaced by the uh, when, uh, the carbon silicon bond is replaced by the carbon oxygen bond and that leads to the corresponding diketone. So uh, under these conditions it does not matter what conditions are used whether acidic, neutral or basic you can only get the corresponding ketone. On the other hand when the uh, substrate is mono substituted, mono substituted in the sense that only one substituent is present as R. Here there are two substituents present. Of course silicon will be common in both the cases. So in the case when there is a mono substitution one can get the possibility of getting the corresponding acid um, if uh, the acidic conditions are used. So we will stop it at this stage uh, today's uh, lecture and uh, we will uh, take up other oxidations uh, in the next class. So what I discussed today was uh, basically uh, this thermal Fleming oxidations uh, mechanisms and uh, their applications in uh, uh, different types of uh, conversions where uh, you can convert an enantioselective uh, carbon silicon bond uh, or, or chiral carbon silicon bond to the corresponding chiral OH bond and therefore you have a possibility of uh, generating chiral molecules uh, without uh, any problem if you have a, 
possibility of uh, making the chiral uh, carbon silicon substrates. So you can go ahead and uh, read the references that I gave or the um, material that I discussed carefully and we will take up the other oxidations next time. Thank you.